today we're going to finish Unit 9, Acquisition 3. The topic for today is calorimetry. So to understand our calorimetry calculations, you need to understand the first law of thermodynamics. So this is the law of conservation of energy. The first law of thermodynamics states energy can be converted from one form to another, but it is neither created nor destroyed. Calorimetry is just the measure of heat flow, and we're going to do calorimetry in something called a calorimeter. This is just a device used to measure heat flow. If we were in the building, we would be doing a calorimetry lab, and this would be our calorimeter. You guys know I'm a very good artist. Um, our calorimeter is just going to be a styrofoam cup. The reason we're going to use a styrofoam cup is because it is a very good insulator. And we're going to fill the styrofoam cup up with some room temperature water. And we can put our thermometer into our calorimeter and we can record the initial temperature of the water. So the water would be at room temperature about 22 to 24 degrees Celsius. And what we can do is we can heat up a metal. Uh, usually we heat it close to 100 degrees Celsius. And then we're going to put that metal into the calorimeter and we can record or measure that heat flow. So since the metal is going to be hot, about 100 degrees Celsius, and the water is going to be about room temperature, 24 degrees Celsius, heat will flow from the metal to the water. Heat is going to continue to flow until both objects reach the same temperature. We can record that final temperature once heat stops flowing, and then we can use that to do some calculations. So we said, a metal is going to be heated, it's going to be placed into our calorimeter. We know heat always flows from the warmer object to the cooler object, so heat will flow from that hot metal to our room temperature water. We said in the last lecture, heat continues to flow until both objects reach the same temperature. That's important to remember. That is going to tell us that the final temperature of the metal must be equal to the final temperature of the water. Heat flows so they both reach the same temperature, so their final temperature would be the same. We talked about using a styrofoam cup because it's a good insulator. So we make a big assumption. A big assumption. Assuming the calorimeter is perfectly insulated and knowing that energy is neither created nor destroyed, we are going to assume that all of the heat energy lost by the metal will be gained by the water. The metal is losing heat energy. It's flowing from the hotter object to the cooler object. So the metal loses energy. The water is going to gain that energy. Well, energy can't be destroyed, so it has to go somewhere. So we are going to assume all of the heat energy lost by the metal is gained by the water. The variable that we use to represent heat is Q. So the energy lost by the metal must be equal to the energy gained by the water. We know that Q is equal to mc delta t. So all I can do is, or all I have to do is take my equation, mc delta t, plug it in for Q. So that brings me to my equation. mc delta t of the metal must be equal to mc delta t of the water. So remember this equation. Again, once you have this equation, it's just plug and chug. <clears throat> All right, first thing we're going to do is define our variables. I like to make two columns, one for the metal and one for the water. Just helps to keep things straight. So a 75.0 gram sample of metal is heated to 100 degrees Celsius. Is placed into a calorimeter holding 100 milliliters of water. 
one milliliter is equal to one gram. So if I have 100 milliliters of water, I have 100 grams of water. And the water is at 24.4 degrees Celsius. The contents of the calorimeter come to a final temperature of 34.9. Remember we said the final temperature of the metal is going to be equal to the final temperature of the water. So 34.9 is the final temperature for both the metal and the water. I'm going to calculate delta T right away. So delta T is going to be T final minus T initial. The reason the temperature of the metal is negative is because the metal is decreasing in temperature. I can do the same thing for water. Final minus initial. And my change in temperature would be 10.5 degrees Celsius. All right, the last thing the problem tells us is the specific heat capacity of water is 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. And we want to calculate the specific heat of the metal. So again, our equation, negative m cat metal is equal to positive M cat water. The reason that Q of the metal is negative is because the metal is losing heat energy, exothermic. Heat is exiting the metal. The reason M cat or Q of the water is positive because the heat energy is leaving the metal, it is entering the water. If heat enters, it's endothermic, Q would be positive. Last step is just to plug in and solve. So we have the mass of the metal. I don't know the specific heat of the metal. I calculated the change in temperature of the metal already. It is equal to the mass of the water times the specific heat capacity of the water times the change in temperature of the water. Just give me a second to calculate. And I got 0 0.89978. Uh, let's look at significant figures. Looks like everything has three significant figures. Leading zeros are not significant. The specific heat capacity of the metal is 0.900 joules per gram degree Celsius.